Welcome to lecture number 17. We are going to continue from last lecture and on this subject of equilibrium carrier densities, this would be the last lecture. Uh, after that, we will move on to uh, other topics. So, uh, where were we? Let us see. So, the, what we had done uh, in the previous lecture was that now we are at a point where if we plot 1 versus t versus log, log of carrier concentration, um, carrier concentration on this axis, then we had that if this is the intrinsic carrier concentration something like this, then I am using just not necessarily same color code in this lecture, but all I am saying is that and this is the amount of doping. For example, if it is uh, if it is n doped material, then this quantity is n d minus n a. Uh, on this scale, if it is already a log scale, then you will directly lead, uh, read n d minus n a, otherwise you will read a uh, read log of this number. Then we had said that our behavior of the actual concentration which we get is something like this. Meaning thereby that beyond this temperature, beyond this temperature on this side of this temperature, our material will going to be is going to be intrinsic shown by blue, blue line and then on this side material will be what we call as extrinsic or another name is that it is called exhaustion region. Owing its name this exhaustion owing to the fact that what has happened is that if we have E C E V and some dopant level, then the, all the carriers which were at this level have also gone to the, they have gone to the uh, conduction band and hence no more carriers can be, the, uh, the, they cannot be any more carriers and hence the number of carriers has become saturated. It is in this region that we use these semiconductors. In this region which is me, by which I mean this exhaustion region, it is this region this exhaustion region, we use our semiconductors and I ended up by mentioning by, by mentioning that suppose you have a p n junction or the, a semiconductor in which this junction one side is p semiconductor other side is n semiconductor. What does that mean? That means that if you well if you keep increasing the temperature then we know that from this curve here that behavior of semiconductor is going to become intrinsic. If this is silicon and this is also silicon, in that case what will happen? While at these temperature regions in the exhaustion region, this behaves like a, this, this region behaves like a p type semiconductor, this region behaves like a n type semiconductor. But if you keep heating it up and temperature goes really high beyond this temperature, you mean that means you are into this region now then this semiconductor is also going to behave like intrinsic and this semiconductor is also going to behave like intrinsic. Meaning thereby that since both are silicon, then this junction property will be lost, it will behave as if it is one big piece of one big piece of silicon all, all over and hence this device will stop functioning. Ultimately, this electronic devices function because that there are junctions of P and N or something like that. So, you lose the junction if you go to high temperature and hence intrinsic region is not interesting region where we can operate the semiconductor, the region where we can operate is then exhaustion. Fine, this is where we were last time. Now, what we are going to do is today's lecture will be what I am going to show you in green portion. I am going to show to you that if you continue to reduce the temperature, that means you continue to move on this axis, then the question we want to answer is what will happen to n when you when temperature start continues to go, uh, become lower and lower. I will show it to you that carrier concentrations again begin to decrease and what is this characteristic of this behavior, I will point out to you. But before I do that, let me continue on this thought of exhaustion and intrinsic carrier concentration alone. Uh, still let me continue on that little bit more before I go to the freeze at still lower temperatures. Let me plot this one by t one more time, one divided by t, I am plotting on this axis and this is log of carrier concentration, maybe log of n if you wish, if we are going to uh, log of k n in which we have this, let us say this straight line, something like this. This is the intrinsic carrier concentration that means on this n is equal to p is equal to n i, this is the intrinsic carrier concentration. And the slope gives me 
the slope gives me minus E g let me call it 1 for right now k t that is what the sorry not t by 2 k or I drop the minus sign it is obvious that it is anyway negative slope. So, let me just write E g 1 by 2 k is the slope. What I mean is suppose you have two semiconductors one has a band gap of E g 1 other E g 2 and let us say band gap of another semiconductor is second semiconductor is greater than that of the first semiconductor. Then what will be the intrinsic behavior? Recall that n i went as square root of n c n v e to power minus e g by 2 k 2 k b t that is what n i was clearly then if you increase the band gap then the carrier density will decrease further this slope will become greater and greater. I am avoiding minus sign I am simply saying more negative slope is what it will become then therefore. If it is therefore, if I plot also simultaneously plot the semiconductor for E g 2 intrinsic carrier concentration then I should plot it something like this if the green line continues like this then this line should be plotted like this meaning thereby that at any temperature this since E g 2 is greater than E g 1 the carrier concentration will be lower and notice the slope the way I have drawn is also steeper this slope of course then will be minor will be E g 2 by k b t will this slope be then in that case. Okay. If so now let us do this if now we say that I have a semiconductor which simultaneously has been doped by let us say we have a semiconductor which has been doped by some net doping of N d minus N a that means is prominently more n dope than a uh, don, uh, the more uh, n dope than p dope that means more donors than acceptors so net doping as we have seen in semiconductor is nd minus na and under these conditions the carrier concentration n the majority carrier concentration p of course will be much smaller which will be ni square then by nd minus na there will be a smaller number and we have given the example on that. So, if we look at this n which is independent of temperature in the exhaustion region then that would look like a line something like this I am again plotting that exhaustion region here is my n d minus n a of course n d min n d minus n a remember whatever I am doing you could plot, plot this as log of instead of plotting log of n you could plot log of p if p is the majority carrier and then you will write n a minus n d it is the same thing. So, whatever I am doing for donors you could do it for acceptors that does not change anything all right if so now notice what happens. So, if I look at this uh, behavior then what do I see I see that this semiconductor E g 1 which has a band gap of E g 1 for example, let us say this is silicon and let us say this is gallium arsenide which has a band gap 1.5 and silicon 1.1 then what will happen that beyond this temperature this semiconductor at this temperature at this temperature semiconductor will start behaving if you increase beyond this temperature right here 1 by t value is more than is less than this then and therefore t is more than whatever corresponds to that point in that case the semiconductor will start behaving like intrinsic semiconductor that we have talked about if your eg2 if you take a semiconductor which has a higher which has a higher band gap then that semiconductor would be able to behave like an intrinsic semiconductor to a higher temperature of course, have smaller value of intrinsic carrier concentration. Therefore, it takes them a greater temperature to reach same value as N d minus N a whatever is in your system and hence they can operate in ex exhaustion region for at a up to a higher temperature sometimes in design considerations you may have to include this as well. So, that is the another point I wanted to make off make to you uh, uh, let you know about uh, uh, want to tell you about before I move on to what is called as fr carrier freeze out. What we are saying is this that when temperature was high the dominant mechanism in fact dominant mechanism was the carriers which came because of this region 
the carriers came because of uh, and corresponding holes here because these electrons jumped over because these electrons jumped over across the band gap therefore we got intrinsic semiconductor and we plotted out this curve right here like this now when the temperature became lower when the temperature was lowered that means we are moving in this direction what happened was at some point of time this the carrier concentration here what determined by the dopant level we have ed as the dopant level and then now what happened was these carriers became the jumps which became possible were these jumps well not these jumps became possible they were always possible when this jump was happening this green one at that time obviously this is smaller energy gap and hence these jumps were happening anyways these jumps were anyways smaller jumps across the dopant level ha happening anyways just that the carrier concentration because of these intrinsic jumps was so high that the the number because of this was much much smaller but now as you lower the temperature the intrinsic carrier concentration the one because because of this jumps qualitatively at least becomes small and this particular number because of this which was happening earlier also becomes the more dominant one and in that case what happens is my curve becomes starts taking a shape of like this okay now you will also recall that i had given an example where i had said that if you have a situation like this ec ev and then let us say i have certain donor donor levels like this and i have some acceptor levels like this and i had said that suppose there are na of these and suppose there are nd of these and i had said that well this is ed level and this is this is ea level this is ea level then i had said that if you were to look at a picture at 0k if you look at 0k then what happens my electrons i tied the electrons are tied up to these levels just wait a minute and i'm going to erase some of these and then i had said that what at 0k what will happen these electrons some of these electrons will go down here and reach here even at 0k because they will that way they will lower their energy so i'm going to remove these electrons from here these four electrons I remove these four electrons, but then I'm showing you at zero k these three electrons at least here still bound to there. These three, these electrons right here, here, and here these three in this picture are still bound to their phosphorus atom. For example, if phosphorus is a donor at, uh, donor uh, donor in silicon, in that case these three electrons are still bound to the phosphorus. The fifth electron is still bound to the phosphorus atom at zero k. Clearly, that means. in this case we know that the carrier concentration would be very low because nothing is there in the conduction band so we clearly know that if we continue to go down a low temperature then this carrier concentration must somehow come down must begin to come down that we know what the nature is whether it's straight line how it will come down that we have to discuss but that's what is called as carrier freeze out this is what we mean by carrier freeze out that even at the dopant level now the carriers will not be able to contribute to conduction and they slowly and slowly some of these uh, the fifth electrons of phosphorus and silicon for example will remain temperature has become so low that there's not enough energy thermal energy to even extract that fifth electron out to the conduction band and therefore the carrier concentration will again begin to drop down it is this statistics now we are beginning to learn about so that's what i'm going to do right now so again what we going to do is consider a semiconductor in which in which nd is greater than na you are free to consider a semiconductor where i take example where donors are more than acceptors you are free to take example where acceptors are more than donors does not matter in that case you must talk in terms of p number of holes per unit volume but because that is the majority carrier in that case all right if that if it is so then fermi level fermi level lies close to 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 ed level 
we have seen this and I have gone through very carefully with you that when Fermi level is exactly at ED level, then half of the half of the impurities are ionized. That means, remember this 5 uh, uh, at all the in the exhaustion region, all the impurities temperature was high enough, all the impurities were ionized, everything had gone to conduction band. But now, if Fermi energy was at say for exactly at the donor level, then what happens? Half of these donors are ionized and half of them are not ionized. That means, fifth electron is still tied to the donor donor atom. So, that is that's the that is what is going to happen at low temperature. So, it is close to the ED level at low temperature. So, what is the low temperature? Then what would happen in this case is what we will like to try to understand. And I will draw my picture again in this case. I will again draw the same picture which I draw, drew on the last page E C, E V and then I am going to draw those 6, 7 of these again these acceptor levels. So, N A is smaller than N D. So, I have shown 7 lines, 7, seven segments here for uh, E D level at, at, at E D level and at E A level I am showing you four, only 4 because that represents N A number of such sites per unit volume and this is N D number of such sites number of phosphorus atoms or number of boron atoms in case of N A number of phosphorus atoms in case of N D per unit volume of course, always. If so, then I have already drawn the picture for you that that what happens is that some of these now in this picture that I will be ionized some of the phosphorus atoms not I will be ionized, but some of these atoms will be ionized and some will not be ionized. Maybe I am showing you one electron due to hair going down here and there is the electron here, hair, air at some low temperature these electrons have gone down here uh, schematically that is not necessarily exactly how it happens. And these are the ones low temperature is low enough these have still not ionized that is what is happening. So, what do we see since N A is smaller than N D. So, first thing we know is since N A is smaller than N D then therefore, therefore all acceptors must be ionized. That is N A should be equal to N A minus all those which are ionized. Why you can see that schematically I have shown you even at 0 k whatever is the all these electrons would have fallen down to minimize the energy and therefore, N A would be completely ionized. The boron would have accepted the for example, a boron in silicon would have accepted these electrons and would, would have become B minus. That means, it is ionized it has having 4 electrons and clearly that will happen because Fermi energy is lying somewhere close to E D level. Fermi energy is somewhere close to E D level. If Fermi energy is close to E D level then that also says you have your formula N D A N A minus divided by N A and you can see that if Fermi energy is somewhere here we have done this exercise that means, all these N A levels would be ionized. Okay. If so, then what can how can I write charge neutrality? If I write charge neutrality, then I know N plus N A minus should be equal to N D plus. That is what should the charge uh, that is what the condition for charge neutrality should be, and this is a condition where P is much much less than N, of course. Otherwise, I should have or I should let me add P let me add in here p first and then i'm going to say that i'm going to use this assumption i'll use this assumption and that n is much much greater than p since it is n doped semiconductor uh, we have seen that that n doped semiconductor n product np is ni square since n is dominating therefore uh, since n is dominating so i'm making assumption n is much much greater than p this is assumption i'm making uh, and in most cases it will be true so if that is so then i'll write this expression as n plus N A, I will replace N A minus by N A is equal to N D plus and I will drop this P in favor of N D plus. Anyway, N D plus you can imagine is on order of 10 to power 16 or 10 to power 17 per centimeter cube, this quantity or N D is and therefore, P will be a small number in comparison therefore. All right, if so, now let us substitute this. What is N D? N D plus by N D you will recall is of course, e to power is equal to e, uh, e f minus e d by k b t. 
it is this quantity. So, I will substitute this in here and therefore, n plus n a should become equal to n d times sorry I made a uh, mistake in this expression right here. So, first let me correct this that is not the expression as we know it. So, that should be equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to power that factor which I had written out e f minus e d by k b t. So, I am going to substitute this now in there. So, that is why it is n d divided by 1 e power e f minus e d divided by k b t. All right. Now, I am going to do this little manipulation in here n plus n a I am going to write this as n d divided by 1 plus e to power e f minus e c by k b t and I am going to write e to power e to power e c minus e d by k b t is what I will write this as. Now, you will recognize what this quantity is. You will recognize what this quantity is. This E f minus E c is a factor which appears in, in, in n also. So, I will use this expression in here that remember n is equal to n c times e to power E f minus E c by k b t. Therefore, I will use this expression in here and therefore, and uh, I will write um, on next page, I will move this, I will substitute this quantity by n divided by n c is what I will substitute this as equal to and then accordingly I will write this expression as n plus n a should be equal to therefore, n d divided by 1 plus n c divided by n e to power, let us see what is that. So, this quantity we will determine as n by n c a. So, we will substitute in here sorry n by n c n by n c e to power e c minus e d e c minus e d divided by k b t. So, what we are going to do is now separate these terms in here and I am going to. Uh, so, this way we have gotten rid of E f at least in this expression and what I am going to do is write this as n plus n a plus n plus n a times uh, n e to power e c minus e d by k b t by n c equal to n d and hence I will write this as n plus n a times n e to power e c minus e d by k b t divided by n c as n d minus n a minus n and therefore, I will write my final expression will be n n plus n a divided by n d minus n a minus n as equal to 1 by n c e to power e to power e d e d minus e c by k b t. So, I have changed the order E d is here, E c is here. So, then I will take it down, take it inverted one inverse of that, then in that case in fact, I should not write 1 by n c, but I should write n c, n c times. So, I should take in there the other side. So, this is n c times, I take this on the right hand side and take this quantity on the left hand side. So, this is n c times e to power and I have changed the minus sign here. So, this is the expression which we use our governing equation, which using which we will try to understand what the behavior in freeze out is. So, what we are going to do is first we will take a case, three cases we will take. 
So, case 1, let us say green 1, let us consider case 1, let us take n a to be equal to 0, thereby that is we will say we have doped only with dope, donor atoms, no acceptor atoms are there and at low T and so that is what we are talking about low temperatures n is let us assume much much less than n is less than that means we are trying to discuss freeze out. So, n has become n d is the most do dominant one let me try to explain this to you through this curve uh, through this curve uh, where is that curve gone which I want to use what I am saying is so then, since this value in that case would represent n d n d minus n a and n a is 0 then we are talking about value of n n values are becoming lower and lower we are talking about when n values are freezing out that means the uh, uh, carriers are freezing out. So, n is becoming less and less compared to n d. So, that is the case we are considering n is less than n d in that case what happens now we are considering case where. So, let us see that n a is 0 this quantity n a is 0 n is much much smaller than n d. So, in the denominator I am going to only keep n d therefore, and in numerator of course, n a is 0. So, I am going to leave it as n square this will make it n square equal to n c e to power e d minus e c by k b t and what is e c minus e d remember this here is e d level here is e c level here is e d level. So, it is measuring this distance it is basically minus of this separation right here the, the dope end level measured from the band edge is what we are got gotten into all right. So, if that is the case then clearly what is implies what is the value of n n in that case is equal to n goes as in that case uh, n c n d square root e to power e d minus e c by e d minus e c by 2 k b t that means, n versus temperature that means, log of n versus 1 by t will have a slope of of E c minus E d by 2 k. What does that mean? In intrinsic case remember this slope was first of all it will be straight line. First of all you can see if I take log of n then I will have a straight line as a function of 1 by t. Second I will have a slope which corresponds to this gap just like this out if you wish. So, the way I will plot it out is as follows. So, we will plot it as carrier concentrations as log of n now as something like this, this and then I am going to plot a straight line like this and this value of course, will be equal to n d n a 0 of course, and this slope will be equal to this slope will be equal to E c minus E d by 2 k would this slope be and carriers is clearly showing that begin to freeze out the carrier concentration begin to decrease. Now, let us take case 2 this is a case where n a is not equal to 0 n a is not equal to 0 this leads to other interesting facts some more interesting facts. Now, in this I can for or I should not say case 2 first let us say if if n a is not equal to 0 then I have two cases possible namely that uh, n is less than n a and another case this is case we will call it 2 now and in case 3 that means I will call where n is greater than n a n is greater less than And remember, it is always true 
always true that N D is the most dominant one is greater than N A and N D is greater than N also. So, only matter is this is always given in case 2 and 3 then we have question is between N and N A which one is bigger N is in one case in case 2 we will consider N less than N A in case 3 we will consider N greater than N A and we will see the consequence of this. So, let us write down all this N D greater than N A that is given N N D greater than uh, N this is understood already and the case 2 is basically where N is less than N A or much much less than we will make it much much less than when we want to make the approximation. So, this is basically the case 2 is what it is we are indicating with. So, if this is so then remember let us go back to our expression N N plus N A divided by N D minus N A minus N was equal to N C e to power E D minus E C divided by K B T. All right. If that is the case, now we are going to make this uh, approximation and we are going to say N is N is much smaller than N A. In that case, we will drop this N in favor of this N A and therefore, I am going to write this as N. So, we will approximate this as N times N A. Now, numerator will become N times N A because I am going to drop this N. This N is much smaller compared to N A and in denominator I could just simply write N D because anyway N A and N R is smaller much much smaller than N A that we can always do because N D is the most dominant one. Therefore, N C e to power E D minus E C K B T. Again what do you observe? log of n versus 1 by t is linear and slope is e c minus e d by k b. That is the slope now. Earlier we had a slope of 2 k, remember 2 k. Now, what has happened? This slope has become, now this slope has become 1 k. Slope has changed, all right. So, this is one, when, when n is less than n a. Before I draw this, let us start looking at also the case where when n, a, n is greater than n a and then we will draw this or case 3 also and then we will draw all these together. So, now let us look at case 3, in which case n we are going to take as greater than n a, all other things remain same namely n d is greater than. So, in other, in other words uh, in this case uh, in, the order is n greater than n a, in the previous case of course, the order of things was therefore, the order of things was n d was uh, uh, n a was greater than n, n was less than that was the order of the, uh, the concentrations. Now, it is n d n and then n a. So, if that is the case again let us go back to our expression n n plus n a divided by uh, divided by n d minus n a minus n equal to n c e to power e d minus e c by k b t. If so, then we can again make the substitution in here that this time n is greater than n a. Therefore, I am going to drop n a in favor of n. So, I am going to write this numerator as n square again and of course, denominator as n d because n d anyway is greater than either of these two. So, I am going to write this as n c e to power E d minus E c by k b t. Now, notice I have a n square. So, again if I plot log log of n versus 1 by t 
Again, what do we need to notice? It's linear. Second, slope is slope is now again. Two k bin again. This is n square. When I take a square root, I'll get a two here. Factor of two here, so again becomes two k b. That's very interesting. That means the slope changes in between. So uh, now we are in a position to plot this whole curve. So I've already plotted the case where n a was equal to zero, and you saw the slope was this whatever this gap energy gap was, meaning thereby that it is E c and here was E d. Then whatever this gap energy gap was, that gap is written here E c minus E d. That's written here. The point is more important. This factor two. There's a factor two. That was the slope of this line which we had when n a was equal to zero. What happens at n n a? Now I'm going to plot what happens when n a is not equal to zero. In that case, I'll get two two cases. One. So log of n or not log natural log since I'm plotting since I'm writing slope as. All right. Now what will happen? Now we have two cases where, when let's see, right? Let, let's repeat it down. When n is less than n a, then slope is one k here. Not two. One is appearing here. When n is less than n a, so when n is less than n a, then our slope is becoming. Then the slope is, in that case, slope is e c minus e d by k b. A minus sign here, of course, and when n is this was case two, and case three was case three was n greater than n a. In that case, you can see that when n is greater than n a, we got a slope which was which had a factor of two in there. So we will write this as minus e c minus e d by two k b. So when n is greater than So slope will become half in magnitude. Slope will become half when n is greater than n a, and it will become more when slope become more when n is less than n a. So the way I will draw this is something like this, something like this, and then something like this. At some point here, it is changing. The slope here is in this case. This is. If we let's give a name because this is becoming very big. So if this is E C, if this is E D, if this is E D, and this is E V, then let's give this as a name. This difference, this magnitude, to be equal to let's call it as uh, let's give it a name. Um, uh, let's give it a E D prime, where E D prime is equal to uh, E C minus E D. That's what this quantity is. That's what this quantity is. So I'm going to plot this as as the slope here is when n is greater than n a. Then I'm going to write this as e d prime by two k b. And the slope here is minus e d prime by k b. And what is this point? This point right here. Let me use a different pen here. Well, it's a right here where the Slopes break. That point should be equal to, on this scale, should be equal to n a. Right? You understand this? So, if I label and this entire curve, then I'll write it this as follows. This quantity, the slope, would be e g by two k. If you wish, I could put a minus sign here. But you understand that it's a minus in there. I was normally not writing it. And then what you? What is it? This point represents a concentration which is equal to N D minus N A. This represents N D minus N A. Now, up to this point, we have region. This is a region case two where where uh, case three. Sorry, this is case three here, which are N is greater than N A. So now the N which I am plotting here, log N is what I am plotting in this axis, on this axis. That number is falling down. And by the way, keep remembering because I'm assuming that we're plotting this on a semi-log type of graph paper. So the numbers we read out here is n a 
on, on a number we read out here is n d minus n a, but otherwise you, if you log value taken then you can think of this as a log, I should write log in front of it also if you wish, depends on how you want to read it. Anyways, so with, with that uh, I hope you understand that part. So, if I look at case 3, then when then I, n, n was equal to n d minus n a and n d of course, was very large. Let us say this is 10 to power 17, this number is 10 to power 17 or something like that and this number is equal to 10 to power let us say 15. So, then n starts becoming less than n d of course, that means it becomes less than uh, less than 10 to power 17, but it continues to be greater than n a. Let us say it is in order of 10 to power 16, that means it is more than this quantity n a here. Then in that case our slope is E d prime by 2 k, but as you can see when n becomes less than n a, that means goes below 10 to power 15, less than 10 to power 15, in that case the slope becomes slope changes. So, the point where the slope changes is roughly where n is equal to n a and hence I have used this point to mark as this value as being that that means this value must be equal to n a. That is what I have I am assuming uh, that is what I have pointed out to you and then the slope here all right. So, using this uh, this is now you can see first physically well, let us see the whole picture. The whole picture looks like this that I have a system in which I have some electrons which are bound to this level. We have at very very low temperature we are at very very low temperature and and there are some acceptor levels also let us say acceptors levels few there are some acceptor levels also which have these have taken their electrons they are ionized and I have only this is a picture at 0 k this is picture at 0 k and we can add here plus plus also in here this is the picture at 0 k and what has happened is as you begin to raise temperature then I start getting we start getting some electrons jumping from here to here and that is what we see in this region here that is what we are seeing in case 2 and this is the case 2 in case 2 and 3 are, are these regions where some n I have shown here 2 some of them have started jumping over to this because temperature is slightly increased and hence this jumps, jumps are becoming possible. As this temperature continues to increase the point comes when all of these electrons have jumped when all of these electrons jump and that is basically the start of this point we are reaching here. Now, as we in keep in increasing the temperature these jumps are still not possible the temperature is low enough and hence we get into situation where semiconductor is where concent carrier concentration remains same which is and this quantity is obvious obviously equal to n d minus n a this is equal to n d minus n a. So, we see find that carrier concentration remains the same as you continue to increase temperature and that is n d minus n a is where it remains to until temperature becomes high enough that these electron jumps also become possible and then the behavior becomes intrinsic like behavior that is the big picture of this semiconductor. But also please notice that this is a very powerful way this is a powerful experiment. Why I have taught you is this is this is a good uh, it is a good uh, characterization technique. What do you notice not suppose you measured carrier concentration in a full temperature range from very low to reasonably high temperature what are the different information can you get what are the different information you can get out of it. Notice this is essentially E d prime you can E d prime and this quantity is E g this quantity is E g. If you see from this you are able to extract just by doing this experiment measuring carrier concentration as a function of temperature whole temperature range things which you can get is you can measure E d that means if you measure this and calculate these slopes then you will measure this E d you will be able to measure these E d levels. Second thing you will be able to see is that where are the slope breaks when you see a break in slope in that case you see you can measure what n a value is you can figure out how many of these n a are present in there what is the number of these acceptor levels present in there. When you see a flat region you can measure out what is n d minus n a you can measure out what is n d minus n a and hence you can figure out what this total number of n d levels are how many n d are present in there. And finally, 
when you go down go go higher in temperatures you can also measure the band gap of the semiconductor so in one experiment you can measure the band gap of semiconductor you can measure the dopant level with respect to the you can measure, measure this dopant level with respect to the relevant band edge that means ec minus ed that that gap you can measure and you able to do so because there thermally activated jumps and there are two types of thermally activated jumps happening one across this gap and other across this gap and that's why you are able to me measure both these gaps so ed prime this ed prime you should be able to measure you should be able to measure the band gap you should be able to measure nd minus na and you should be able to measure na this much information you are able to get out of this one experiment only one which you are not able to measure a figure out is what is this energy level and this of course you are not able to measure because no transition is no jumps of electrons are taking place between this valence band and the dopant level except a level are taking place so how could you measure them so that's that's the only one so hence it is a this carrier freeze out experiment is a very powerful technique to be able to measure all these quantities of course you would ask the question how would you measure n measuring n is not a trivial exercise you could measure n using a hall probe experiment hall measurement you can do to measure n alternative is that you can measure instead of n you could measure possibly conductivity you could measure possibly conductivity and since conductivity is equal to n times number of carriers times mobility times uh, the charge the basic fundamental charge and if you make assumption that mobility is not a very strong temperature function of temperature then more or less what you measure by sigma is what you measure in n if you make that assumption so this measurement is fairly simple a four point probe like measurement will give you conductivity and accordingly you can me measure n therefore similarly by the way i have taken example where nd was greater than na greater than na you could have measured you could have a situation where na is greater than nd in which case then i would be plotting as a function of 1 by t i will be plotting log of p and it will be straightforward enough to say that these curves will look something like this where actually uh, now i will be measuring nd here and measuring na minus nd here na minus nd just same analysis you can do this of course remains the same it measures eg by 2k minus if you i wish and what i'll be measuring here then in this case would be e a minus ev by 2k and this will be kb e a minus ev by k b so these are the quantities we'll be measuring just by same analysis now in this case it will be log of p that will be plotted in this direction so you'll be able to measure whether it's a if it is a p type semiconductor then this is how you'll measure it or n type then this curve is what you'll measure out all right so this brings us to the end of uh, this brings us to the end of this uh, i hope you are able to understand this whole equilibrium carrier densities why this is taught is uh, because the re reason is this i have mentioned earlier also these are equilibrium carrier densities and the r from now on our operation range will be confined between this two temperatures so our room temperature must will choose semiconductors only those semiconductors whose room temperature lies somewhere between these so room temperature should be between this range or temperature operation of that semiconductor must be in this range because this is the range in which semiconductor devices will be made this is the range in which semiconductor devices exhaustion region or extrinsic semiconductor will be uh, where with which will be making these devices and now from now on i'll assume that this is where we are operating in this condition in this condition we are we uh, will never go to low temperature or high temperature range as far as devices are concerned okay now when you make devices when you apply voltage you are disturbing this equilibrium so i had said in the beginning itself this to knowing equilibrium carrier density is important because you want to know that when you disturb the system then we will have to watch out how will this system like to come back to its equilibrium so in order to see the rates of how fast it comes tries to come back to its equilibrium then you must know where the equilibrium is and hence we have described the equilibrium from now on we will start discussing about those processes which disturb this equilibrium and after that we can start talking about devices so let me close this chapter here today with equilibrium carrier concentrations and next time we'll start with new topic on which will lead us to towards devices thank you